All right, guys, and welcome back. Today is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to be doing anything really remote starters. I just really wanted to do a small little review on three multimeters. And two of these you guys have probably seen before. We got the Snap-on EDM525E and the OTC3990. Okay, this is a, a pretty high-end multimeter. It's about 400 and I'd say between 450 to 500 bucks, depending on where you are. And this one right here, you're looking at about 450 with a bunch of accessories that come with it. Now, this other one right here is actually one from China, and it's an 0118B. It's actually a Bluetooth multimeter. Now, the only reason that I got this meter, the Oan one, was to actually do a smaller review, and because Snap-on actually came out with a Bluetooth multimeter, but their multimeter is a thousand dollars Canadian. Now, not everybody has a thousand dollars to go put it put into a new multimeter. So I went and I picked up this guy. Now, I'm not gonna go over the multimeter Bluetooth portion of it itself onto this. It's gonna be basically how precise it is compared to these two higher uh, brands. So here we have the, the Oan versus basically the OTC and the Snap-on. Now, I also have some resistors here, okay? So we're actually going to do a resistance test onto them and see which one of the three actually comes close. Now I don't have a small resistor, so I'm going to be just taking a basic automotive relay and I'm going to be checking the resistance between pins 85 and 86 onto it. Then I have a 2.3 kilo ohm resistor right here. And then I have 11.8 kilo ohms right here. These are unopened, they're not used. so. I think it would be a very valid test. And then we're going to come over and we're actually going to test out the amp feature. Now, the OTC doesn't have any amps. This is a hybrid. Uh, it, this multimeter right here is basically for hybrid testing. So it doesn't have uh, amp function. But if you guys do really like this meter, you can always get yourself an amp clamp to go with it. And with this, you'll actually be able to measure the amperage of uh, stuff. So. Without further ado, let's uh, let's start with the voltage. I am going to be taking notes on what we can find because I don't even know how close everything is going to be. Hopefully everything is pretty, it stays pretty consistent throughout and there's not much deviation from each. So that way it gives you guys a good idea if this is a valid uh, multimeter, the Oan, or are these guys really just like top of the game or are they just overpriced? So. Let's get this started. So first we're going to turn them all on. We're going to turn on that. We're going to turn. First we're going to be checking our voltage and we're going to go volts DC first. Okay. And I'm going to go one by one and just so you guys can see exactly what the, the voltages are. So right now I'm going to be doing the all on first. And I have a little 12 volt battery that I used in one of my other videos. So the only thing that I don't like about the on is the leads are very, very short. But let's get this going. And I don't like that. Okay, let's change that. Let's see. The on 12.68, it looks like. Which is a decent reading because I had the battery, I just charged it, so it's that's a that's a good reading. Now we're gonna go with the snap-on. As you can see, I'm not gonna take another a different lead there. It's a lead for the snap-on. And snap on is reading at twelve point seven. And now we're going to go with the OTC for voltage. And the OTC right here. And what do we have? We have twelve point six eight. So the O1 and the OTC are actually reading the exact same voltage. So that would mean the snap-on is actually off. Or typically if you've got two multimeters that are reading the exact same voltage and you have one that isn't, you would be best to go with the ones that are reading the exact same. O1 was at 12.68, snap-on was at 12.7, and OTC was at 12.68. Now we're going to do a, the small resistance reading. And we're going to start off with the, uh, the relay. 
because it's the smallest uh, resistance reading that I have. And the leads. So we're looking for pins 85 and 86. So we're going to go onto resistance. And the other one is auto ranging too, just to let you guys know. And you can select manual at the same time. So what do we have? We have 77.3, 77.2 ohms of resistance. Bring this up to you guys so you guys can see. That's with the old one. So I'm going to mark that down, 77.2 ohms of resistance. Next, we're going to go with the snap-on. Snap-on is going to be... Seventy-seven point seven. Okay. And now I'll just change these over because I actually don't have little clips for for my OTC. Kind of lost them. Don't really use it. The OTC. So now we're back on the OTC, and like I said, 85 and 86 to measure the resistance of the coil. 85. Put this on resistance first. And 86. And we get the OTC is very slow 77.5, 77.4, 77.4. Oh, just went down to 0.2. 0.3, 0 0.2. So, but it's pretty constant at 77.4, so we're going to go 77.4. So, none of them are the same. So, we have the O1 at 77.2, the snap on at 77.7, and then the OTC at 77.4. Me personally, since the uh, O1 and the OTC are actually fairly close compared to the uh, the snap-on, the snap-on is almost a 0.5 of an ohm difference. It's a 0.5 of an ohm difference from the O-on and 0.3 of an ohm difference from the OTC. So, my personal opinion, the, the snap-on is, is uh, not performing the way it's supposed to. The battery is new into this, I just changed it. So, all of them actually have brand new batteries. Okay, so like I said, the... OTC, I won't really be able to do amperage with it. I can hook up my amp clamp to it after, and we'll see what type of reading we get. But I can do it with my, the o on. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take and we're gonna measure the amps of a small motor. I've already measured this motor, and I know what the amperage is supposed to be. So we'll just take more. Go from there. So first off, I'm going to take the old one, and I'm going to change him over to MCC. And MCC. Now I'm going to connect my battery lead back up. Here we go. Okay. So let's see what we get. Sorry guys. And 0.27 amps on this motor. So we're gonna turn all that off. So the O1 is reading at 0.27. Now remember 
there's no resistance on this motor, so it's just basically free spinning. So it's for sure that the uh, amperage is going to be very, very low since there is no uh, acting force onto it. Next, we're going to go with snap on. We're going to see what snap on does. Sorry about that guys. Alright, so let's try our snap-on and see where our snap-on reads. And we're gonna start it. And we're already in amps, amps, don't wanna blow the meter. And 0.274. 0.274 So on amperage, the on and the snap on are actually the exact same and I'm going to take and I'm going to do the OTC with the amp clamp just because I feel like it. And we're just going to take my leads and just transfer my leads over. Because I don't feel like switching. I plug my clamp in and this will work out a lot better. zero this as much as I can. We are zeroed. I'm going to put my amp clamp around. And zero point zero five six. Change the polarity. Point zero five six. So that's at 55 amp. Oh, half. Half an amp. So the conversion with this amp clamp is every 100 millivolts is one amp. Okay, I'll show you guys there. I'm on the 20 amp scale and on 20 amps it's every 100 millivolts is one amp. So to me personally, since the snap-on and the O1 were closest together, and this one was way off, because uh, on my snap-on and my um, and my own one, I was reading about, what was it, 0.27 amps and 0.274 amps on the snap-on and 0.27 on the O1. And this guy was right here was almost reading half an amp, which to me is a little, uh, is a little excessive compared to the other two. So, I wouldn't really, like right now it's reading a 64. A little over half an amp. So, me personally, I'll stay away from uh, the OTC for the amps. Like I said, uh, oh, a half an amp can make a big difference in the way a circuit reacts. So, turn this guy off. Turn this guy off. Unplug, unplug. All right. So, I just remembered that I didn't actually do the three steps for the resistance. So now I'm gonna take one of the 2.37 kilo ohms resistors, which is this guy right here, and we're gonna measure him with all three meters, just like we just did for uh, the amps and that uh, we did for the voltage. Now the only reason I picked the amps, voltage, and uh, resistance is because those are the main features of a multimeter that people actually use. 
especially in automotive. And I'm in automotive, so I'm actually an automotive technician. And this is the way that those are the three main ones that I that I actually do use on a multimeter. I actually have a lab scope for uh, my frequency and everything else, so um, for my waveforms. So I don't really uh, need the multimeter for that. So now we're gonna take and we are going to test. Oh. Ah. Ohms and ohms and ohms and see who gets the closest. So turn this guy off before he catches fire. And calm, 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 calm. Off and resistance and ah. oh. Alright guys. So like I said. I just opened up the bag, okay, and now we're going to measure resistance on the old one and see what the 2.37 uh, kilo ohm, what it reads onto that. Two point three five five is what I'm reading with the old one, which is pretty close. 2.355. Oh, and it's supposed to be 2.37. So now we're going to go to snap on and we're going to see what snap on reads. Snap on is very touchy. They can pick up on signals from everywhere. It's another reason I'm not too fond of my snap on because of that. But 2.36566, 6, 6, which is very, very close. 0 0.04 off, 0 0.004 off, sorry. Oh, and now we're going to try. And I've been using the same resistor for all three, so, so snap on actually at 2.366. 2.366 and 2.355 and now we're going to go with the OTC because precision is everything in automotive. You got to be as close to your numbers as you can. Okay. And I just in the, the OTC is so slow. So 2.353 is what I'm getting off of the OTC 2.353 2.353 so that's with the relay uh, 2.37k ohms 2.37k and 2.37k and just remember guys this is kilo ohms okay I just don't feel like repeating kilo ohms every single time that I take a measurement. So I'll repeat it just as once that all these measurements are on kilo ohm, just to let you guys know. So that was my 2.37. So the closest one to, the, to that was the snap on. It had 2.366. So snap on's in the lead on that one. OTC and O1 were. The one was actually closer than the OTC, which is very surprising, but it outperformed it on that area right there. And the amps, the OTC was just off completely. Because this uh, this little motor draws about uh, 0.3 uh, amps on, on uh, with nothing hooked up to it, just free spinning. That I tested for the amps and the OTC was way off on that. So now, let's go with the 11.8 K ohms of resistance and see what we get I am going to be using the same resistor for all three just like I did in the other ones and first off we're going to go again with the OAM oh 
Owan is reading 11.74, which is very close. 11.74. I don't know if you guys can see that with the glare. I can't. I can hardly see it. So, 11.74. And that's out of 11.7. That was an 11.8. And we got 11.74, which is very good in my opinion. 11.74. Now, snap on. What reading is snap on going to give us? Uh, I didn't test the, the resistance of my leads either, but honestly, I don't know many people that actually do. We're gonna go and gonna test. And eleven point seven five. So yeah, I'll beat the old one. Eleven point seven five. Eleven point seven six. Seven five, seven six. So it must be close to eleven point seven six. So that's what we're gonna give a snap on. Eleven point seven six. And now we're going to go back to the OTC. OTC's reaction time is so slow compared to the other two. I think the fastest reaction time is uh, the O1. So 11.75. 11.75. We have the O1 with the 11.8K kilo ohm resistor at 11.74, which is still very, very close to what the, the reading was supposed to be. The snap on was the closest with the 11.76 kilo ohms of resistance. And the OTC was, well, it's, it's in between 11.75 and 11.74. So the OTC and the O1 are pretty much the exact same. So, so far, the Owan is actually doing very, very good. I'm uh, very surprised. Uh, I didn't think that it would be as close as it, as it is. Like I said, uh, this multimeter right here is a, a $70 multimeter. Okay. The, OT, the OTC, it comes with a, a few other um, gadgets with it, but it's uh, still a $350 to $400 resistor. And, uh, resistor, sorry, uh, price. And this this guy alone with the multimeter and just the leads was three hundred and fifty dollars, four hundred dollars if I'm not mistaken. I bought it like almost uh, uh, four years ago, so give or take. But I really wanted a multimeter with a Bluetooth option, and I went and bought this one. And so far, it's actually doing what it's supposed to. Okay. Now, if we go by the turn wheel. The O1 is actually, it's very solid. It's not going to jump out and uh, give you false readings or go into amps when it's not supposed to or anything like that. The snap-on is very, very tight. This guy's not going to move whatever you do to it. And the o OTC is probably the weakest on the turn wheel compared to the other two. Now what else? Now the the snap-on actually comes with it's already backlit. Okay, it's a LED backlit, so it's you know it, it's very visible in the dark. These the O1 and the OTC actually have. Uh, if I can get it to work for you, there it is. Actually light up the OT the O1 lights up just as well. In the dark it's very visible. The one thing I did like about the the O1 is actually it has a small little flashlight on it which is pretty cool. Especially if you're working underneath the dash and you gotta go and you know you don't feel like uh, hauling in a huge light. Well this guy's probably more than enough ready enough to do that job. Now there is one other feature on all three that I actually am gonna test and that is temperature because when you have these multimeters and you actually have a a temperature uh, probe you actually can use it for like AC coolant and stuff like that to see what uh, temperatures everything is running at so 
Let's go with the O1 first. I'm going to turn everything off and we'll go with the O1. And remove all these. Now, I was actually very surprised too with the way the O1 leads came. I was expecting like the cheap plastic ones on the $10 multimeters that you can buy it from like Harbor Freight or places like that, Princess Auto. But honestly, they're very very flexible like i said the only downfall for me is that they're not long enough so maybe oh i could think about putting longer leads because this is for automotive applications sometimes you have your multimeter in one area and then you want to bring it to another area but you do have the bluetooth feature so technically not even with the bluetooth feature you still need longer leads especially if you gotta do a widespread from one end to the other so just a, a little note that if you guys do purchase this guy to take and get yourself an extra set of leads, uh, longer leads for it. Make sure that they are Cat 3 and make sure that they are rated for the maximum output. That's another thing too. This The Snap-on is rated at 10, uh, 10 amp max output where the O1 is actually rated at 20 amp max. Me, oh, you guys can't even see that. Right, I'll show you guys like this. I don't know. You guys can see it? But it's rated at 20 amp max over here in the corner. Okay, and the snap-on is rated at 10. Which is down here. Like I said. Now, me personally, you can always use an amp clamp if you really want to. But if not, and you want to use these guys, I would prefer a higher amp rating. And the only reason is, is because some systems you'll see that uh, they'll be hooked up to like a 15 amp fuse that's fine so you can actually test that whole circuit of the vehicle with a 20 amp meter whereas if that circuit is onto a 10 amp fuse well you guys can't test it with this guy you guys are going to blow the fuses and the fuses on the snap-on meters are very expensive I one of a guy I know just bought like uh, I think it was five or six of them and it cost them like thirty dollars like they're five or six dollars a piece and if you just keep blowing them well, it gets pretty expensive. And the old one, I have no idea how much they cost, but with the 20 amp fuse in there, you just gotta make sure that you're not gonna short it out if this uh, circuit short, short circuited to, to positive or to ground or whatever. So, with that being said, let's hook up our temperature uh, probe and see what we're go gonna get. Now, the temperature in my room right now is. 23.2 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. I live in Canada here, so. So we have 23.2 degrees on. I gotta find it first, sorry guys. There we go. So I'm set up on Celsius and I'm reading at 24, 23.2. I don't know, it might drop. I had it in my hands too, so it might actually go down. But for temp right now, we are at 23.2 degrees Celsius, and we are reading uh, 24 on the old one. Perfect. Now, let's go over. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, no, I don't want that to fall. Okay, let's pull this guy out and screw him back in. I don't give a false reading. Loose connections. Anyway, so 24 on the O1. Now if we go with the snap-on. Let's put that in the right area. Since we're not going to get the right reading. Alright, and we're going to go all the way down to temp. Because they actually have just a setting. And we're going to press function to bring it over to Celsius. And... 23.8, 23.7, 23 23.6, it actually depends maybe where I put it, 23.4, 23.5, I am holding it in my hand so it might affect it a little bit, 23.1, 22.9, 22.8, 22.7, 22.6,
So we're going to say it's at 22.8. And control is 23.2 and 22.8. I don't know if you guys can actually see that on the meter or not. I'll bring it up to you guys. So 22.5, it actually went down. I, I don't think snap on. It's very precise under, under temperature reading. And that's good for that. Now we're going to take that one off. And the OTC actually has a temperature also. Okay, so we're going to take and we're going to check it. So far the OTC hasn't been the best meter of them all. And then we'll take and we'll turn it on. Alright, and we're going to go... With the OTC you actually have to select a function for it because it's not where it's supposed to be. And see the OTC is actually touching the case right now, so... Let's see. Gonna leave it for about uh, 30 seconds, guys, just to let it, because it was touching the case, so it might actually be reading improper. We are staying at 22. <laughs> 71 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit. Oh, just hit 23. 73, 71 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't even know what that is, guys, to be honest with you. Live in Canada, I don't really use Fahrenheit. And Fahrenheit reset 71. 21.66 Fahrenheit. So the OTC is really not uh, really not performing properly. And the only time I do use Fahrenheit is when I'm taking them, uh, looking at the gauges on an AC machine. There we go. Celsius. 23. So, it might have been because I had it in my hands a while ago. 23, 24, range. Select, sorry. 75. Yeah, 75 seems more 23-ish. Uh, let's see, 75, 23.8, so, so we had 21.66, which is definitely not it on to the OTC, so that's basically it, so we went through the, uh, the resistance, the voltage, the temperature and the amperage like I said this guy really doesn't do amps so it's not even worth putting him into the amps uh, section but as a basic multimeter for uh, voltage and ohms because don't forget this guy wasn't made to do uh, basic stuff this guy was made for insulation tests and other things and to do other things with hybrid vehicles okay just remember that okay that's the OTC so, but as a voltage and ohm meter, he still performed uh, fair, uh, fairly well. The snap-on and the O-on were very, very close on all areas, in my personal opinion. Like, uh, like the OTC and the O-on were exactly the same on voltages, where the snap-on was up by uh, 0.1. It's not too high. It's not really going to throw off your readings all that much if you're diagnosing something, so you can still use that. Now, if we go on resistance, we start out with 2.37 kilo ohms of resistance. Uh, sorry, it's the, the relay. And the O-on had 77.2. The snap-on had 77.7. And uh, the OTC had 77.4. So the O-on and the OTC outperform the snap-on on this one because I just found the snap-on way too high and if you have like I said if you have two meters that are reading pretty much the exact same thing the third one is probably off now 
on amps, the on and the uh, snap on were actually very close. Okay, they, uh, the the one didn't show me exactly. The snap on was more precise. It was at uh, 0.274 amps, whereas the O1 just said 0.27. So if you want to get a little bit more precise on the amperage, I guess you you know you could take a snap on and not the O1. After that, we have uh, temperature. Now the ambient temperature in the room that I'm in is at 23.2 degrees Celsius. The O1 was reading 24 but it was reading 75 degrees Fahrenheit so that's like a 23.8 so that's that's very good and it's very very close on to the O1. The snap-on was actually below what I would, what the, the temperature of the room was by 0.4 degrees and the OTC was at 21.66 degrees so the closest was actually uh, the snap-on even though it was below it was actually still closer than the O1 but they're still fairly close like I said for right now the OTC is like underperforming on this so with that being said uh, is the O1 actually a valid choice for a multimeter for automotive purposes I say yes okay the, People keep saying that they want a true RMS reading, uh, multimeter meter and all that, but most people don't even know what a true RMS re meter is. Even I'm not too uh, at 100% sure on what it does exactly because we don't really use AC voltage. And from my understanding, our, the true RMS is actually for uh, AC voltage and AC, uh, AC current, I, I should say. It gives you a, a more precise exact AC current reading if it's a true RMS and if it's not well then you're not going to get that, that true AC current reading now I, I could be wrong if I am somebody can jump in and post it in the comments maybe edu hopefully educate me and some other people that don't know exactly what true RMS is because I actually have never really had to use a true RMS reading onto a vehicle automotive purpose this guy perfect now if a house electrical I don't know if this guy would perform properly. This guy actually has a near uh, near current verification or an NCV uh, sensor inside of it. So if you go onto an open wire, it actually reads the the power in the wire and it'll light up up here. So this guy might be more for a house uh, electrical, but you never know. But like I said, the true RMS reading, I really don't, I never had to use it. So I'm not even gonna get into that area of the multimeter on any of them so like I said if anybody wants to jump in jump in educate us uh, on to what it is exactly that would be great and that's uh, that's pretty much it guys so hopefully you guys like this video I, I want to go through and select uh, three multimeters that are actually on the market and the one you might you may actually see more of just because it's not a snap-on or an OTC doesn't mean it's not a good meter and that's what this video was was put about and as you can see it actually the O1 actually performed just as well maybe a little bit under but just as well as the two top brands like OTC and uh, and snap-on it is a uh, an auto ranging meter just like the rest you you can do hertz, duty cycle, uh, you can do microamps, amps, uh, milliamps, same thing as the, as you said, uh, as snap on an OTC. So, for now, I haven't tried it onto the vehicle yet, but I will be trying it. And as soon as I do, I'll let you guys know exactly how it performs and how close it is to the, the specs that I'm, I'm trying to get. And hopefully this video helps somebody into choosing a multimeter and letting you know that you pick a pick a decent multimeter that they really want and that they don't actually have to go with the big name brands in order to do it so uh, I'm gonna leave you guys with that and have you guys you guys have a good day